Fluctuations in the stock market can sometimes seem to be inconsistent with what is happening in the economy. Are stock market and economic performance always aligned? Does a strong stock market performance always signal a growing economy? If we understand the relationship between stock market and economy, all these questions can be easily answered. We have industry expert Chirag with us. Chirag, could you please help us understand the relationship between economy and stock market? If you see, there are four state of market, right? Deep value, value, growth and euphoria. So how we can derive in which state we are right now or at any point in time. So it is very, again, very simple. So the on left on, on the bottom horizontal uh, line, there is a low P, low P means low valuation and high P means high valuations. And on the, uh, on the vertical line, it is on the bottom, it is low earning and on the top, it is high earning. So P is nothing but the sentiment, right? And earning is the fundamental. So when both are low, we are in a called deep value market. P is low and earning is low. When P is high, so when, sorry, P is low and earning is high, it means that valuations, value prices of the stocks are lower, but the uh, uh, company's earning are higher. It is called value market, value zone. When the P is high, but earning is low, it is called growth zone. Why the P is high? Because, not because of price, it is because of the low earning growth. Right, so it is again if the earning growth um, improves, automatically the market will become fairly valued. So this is the third zone, and the fourth zone is both are very high. So two is the best time to invest. One is also one of the good time to invest, but actually generally the market will not come out of this on on its own. Right, it requires some stimulus from outside. But a value market is everything has the, everything is good with the economy, but only the prices has not improved with the economy. Right, so this is all uh, the market value. So, but there is also one more parameter. So as of now, we are here because neither, because our earning is also high. Our P is also correcting, right? So earning is high, P is correcting. There was a risk of earning to go down and there was also a, a risk of valuation to go up. But what has happened, the earning has went up and the P has came down. So we are somewhere in the middle right now. So we are what kind of we are into fairly valued market what is the state of economy so again it is very easy you just have to put a two by two matrix there is growth and there is interest rate or inflation on the horizontal uh, on the vertical line so there is a low growth and there is a high growth there is a low interest rate and there is a high interest rate so just because on october the growth was high and the interest rate was also started rising so we are getting going into peak right which is the it is called overheated economy when both are low, low interest rate and low growth, it means it is slow down or recession, right? So there is so everyone was talking about recession. I, I fundamentally, if I put this into this picture, you need to have a low growth and low interest rate for it, economy to classify into recession. So we are far away. We are actually actually opposite to the recession, right? And that's why now, if you don't have those data ready with you, the simple phenomena, those those simple rules, you generally get carried away by newspaper news. So what was the problem in October or even current time? Either we can go to the stagflation or either we can go to the boom. So what is the risk of stagflation? There is high interest rate and low growth. The growth will come down and inflation will go up. Generally, this is a very deadly combination because you are having higher inflation and higher interest rate with low growth. During that time, neither monetary policy work, neither fiscal policy work. And this will generally happen because of cost push inflation. Right? Because it is not the inflation is not because of higher demand, it is because of the higher cost. This is called cost push inflation. When the commodity prices started going up, they start showing up, right? So you don't you you don't have the demand at the time, and still you can have a higher inflation and higher interest rate. So no fiscal policy and no uh, uh, monetary policy at work during that time. So actually, there was a risk of we are getting into this zone right stagflation but what has happened the commodity prices has corrected by some commodities corrected by 50 percent 40 percent 30 percent 20 percent and crude was 130 dollar a barrel at point time one point of time today it is 96 so it is also corrected by 40 percent so if the crude was kept on going higher and higher there was chances that we would go into stagflation but if the commodity prices 
kept on falling and the growth will remain intact we can again get back to the boom zone so these are the phase of the economy where economy stay for a quite long period of time this one and four economy will stay for a very less lesser time right so right now there is a lesser chances to go into stagflation there are more chances to go into the boom because if what data we need to track for it the interest rate the inflation and the crude prices and commodity prices so right now if they come came into the uh, you know comfort zone i think we we can have a boom booming economy because the growth is already high so this is what is the so it is very simple you just need to put this three two by two matrix and you have to see what is happening so any time without without waiting for any conference call or any webinar you can actually put it to go thread sheet with a paper and you can create this two matrix and you can make understand out of how 100 rupees how much i should put into the market in current time and as i have told you why this theory is very simple if you see the economy has grown by from last 30 years the nominal gdp this is gdp plus inflation has grown by 12.4% the sensex has grown by 12% and sensex earning has also grown by 12% right so all this three has grown by 12% cagr over a 30 years period it means that if economy will grow the company's earning will grow and if the company earning will grow the sensex will also grow there is no rocket science but people what people understand is if the sensex will grow it means that economy is growing and it means the earning is also growing it is not that way actually the economy is growing that's why earning is growing and that's why the sensex is growing so it is a story of a husband wife and it's their dog right so what the husband was going with his dog to a, to somewhere and the people on the street was looking at uh, with with his dog the husband is going with his dog people and dog was doing so much activity because what is what is the best it can do right so people were actually looking at the dog and after 30 minutes they reached to a mall right and who wanted to go to the mall first either the dog or the husband the answer is definitely the husband but what people looking at to whom people looking at the people were looking at the dog and that is nothing but a sensex right so the sensex is so the the way we look at the sensex because we can we can see the number every day right and every minute and every second so the people were looking at sensex but who were driving that sensex the husband right the company's earning were actually driving the sensex and not the dog was driving the husband so first we need to understand it is the company's earning which drive the sensex and not the sensex but what people are looking at they are looking at the dog right now there is another case to it right now suddenly when they were going towards the mall the wife called the husband because he has asked for something to get from uh, the mall so wife called the husband and the husband has moved to the another direction and which was actually the another mall now what was the role of the wife the wife is nothing but it is the uh, economy so when economic when the macro economic indicator change the husband will still go and still go to the mall but he will go to the different mall because he got the call from his wife right so they are still moving ahead but they are uh, moving in the different direction because the macro indicator has changed now the economy has changed economy has dictated that the earning will now improve for this sector and not this sector because the macro indicator has changed and that is what is the wife the call of the wife so the economy is still growing but it is growing in the different direction than what was anticipated right so there are so that is how it it was kept on happening so it is a story of g economy earning and the sensex so economy dictates where the earning will improve and where the sensex will grow now the problem is how to predict this economic indicator then again we can't predict them so to to provide solution to that problem what you need to do so there are two two kind of husband there is a great husband and there is an average husband and there is a below average husband a below average husband and an average husband will move will will, will change its direction as per the call from the economy which is his wife but a great husband won't won't change the direction he just listen to the call and he'll go to the same mall and buy the same thing because his job is to bring the bring the item to the home and not 
the item where from his wife has you know indicated to him so there was one one joke that one day uh, there was uh, some problem with the uh, <coughs> a meal uh, of uh, one of within a, within the family so the husband asked for the pickles so what why he was asking for the pickles so the the uh, the problem with that is if the husband was asking for the pickle it means that there is no there is some problem in today's meal uh, and there is one more indication there is problem with the husband also that he don't have that guts to sell tell her wife that there is a problem with the meal right so a great company is a one company which despite of bad economic indicator they kept on growing right despite of bad economic indicator they kept on growing because if the crude is going up if the interest rate is going up right if we, if the metal prices are not favorable if the policies are not favorable if global situation is not favorable still they kept on growing their profit and that is why they do they don't depend on the the global macro economy which are not predictable right so that is what is the essence of investing you need thanks for your insightful answer if you have any questions related to this or any other investment options or related to your financial goals feel free to book a free appointment with our financial planner the link to the free booking is given in the description below this video also will you be interested to attend insightful investment webinar then feel free to register for our upcoming insightful enlightening investment webinar and it is completely free the registration link for the upcoming webinar is also given in the description box if you like this video please give a thumbs up also share it in your social circle if you are not subscribed to our youtube channel so far please subscribe now bye